You're listening to The LaunchCast, the podcast about leadership, business, life, and growth with me, your host, George Andriopoulos. It's like food for your ears. Launch sequence. Launch sequence activated. Launch sequence activated. Five, four, three, two, one. Woo! Hey, hey, everybody. Welcome to the launch cast. It's the season premiere, episode 301, and it only took three takes to get this intro done right. And that might be a record. That might be a record. Episode 301, it's called Thank You For Coming To My TED Talk Part 1. Two-parted to open up this crazy season. But first, it's the Launch Dad himself bringing you your favorite podcast on the planet leadership business life growth right now as the beat drops into the black hole still love this song still get goosebumps you know what let me play this in the background you know you know on a uh, on a tv show when you get like the extended cut of the the theme song of the show and you get all excited i don't know if you guys ever did that i remember I remember when I was younger, when I'd watch Full House, there was two versions. There was like the the abbreviated version where they hop from like the middle of the first verse into the chorus. And then there's the one where they play the whole song. And I used to get so jazzed up when I hear that. So, so I'm going to play you some more of this theme song as I talk to you a little bit because it's so good. Tommy Lumberg, singer of this song, singer and composer of this song. Let's crank it a little for you. He drops it even better at this part. This is where it's like mic drop right here. Boom. Three, two, one. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. That's enough of that. What's happening, guys? I'm back. I'm back. George Andriopoulos, the launch dad himself, back with season three. This is the season premiere of the launch cast, episode 301. Um, You know, I talked to you a little bit in the trailer last week, right? We dropped our our quick, what what was it, a 10-minute trailer, 12-minute trailer, where we tickled you a little bit. We tickled the pickle a little bit. We talked a little bit about the, the change in format. Uh, of this season a little bit, right? I want to get a little deeper into leadership. And so we're going to continue the great interviews that you guys are used to, the in-depth interviews with leaders to really get to the crux of leadership here, these unconventional journeys to leadership. But there's more. Um, You know, there, there are important conversations that need to be had, and we're going to have those conversations, right? We're going to be debating things here and there. There, there, I don't want to give away too much because there's some really cool stuff that I have planned for you guys to check out. But, you know, it's, it's, it's more than just talking to leaders. It's kind of indicative of the type of leader you are when you, when you take action, right? And so I want you guys to see that this podcast is more than just the backstory. This podcast is also about action about taking action about showing you guys what taking action looks like so we're going to have those difficult conversations um this week is going to be an example of something else that we're doing round tables right uh round tables with multiple leaders right so we're doing a two-parter and this is part one again called thank you for coming to my ted talk so you guys know not only am i a three-time tedx speaker keynote speaker all that jazz. I am also the executive producer of a TEDx event, TEDx Farmingdale, uh, and we are having our third annual event right now. Uh, it's coming up on October 9th. I don't know if you've if you're listening to this before the event, after October twenty October ninth, twenty twenty one, and I'm super excited about this event because we're getting back to the core of what this thing is. We're getting back to the ideas worth spreading, and we're putting eight speakers doing seven talks on the stage and it's going to be powerful. 
really, really powerful. Some incredible names, by the way. <laughs> I'm like uh, salivating just thinking about this. Um, you know, the but uh, to 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 fully understand, and I'm losing my words here because I, I'm just I have so much that I want to say, but I'd rather you guys hear it from the mouths of the people that have done it before, which is what today will be about. So, so these two episodes, we did two roundtables with TEDx Farmingdale alumnus, right? Um, the first one, part one, uh, has, has five of our alumnus joining us and we're gonna be uh, introducing them um, when we get to that part of it. And we're really talking about a few things. One is, the importance of events like this, events that bring the truth to the stage, whether it's your truth, my truth, a truth that we need other people to hear. And and it's just about sort of putting these ideas out there and seeing how other people can take them and spread them, right? That That's the evolution of an idea um, starts with its origin. And so that's why, you know, this year's event, every every year has a theme, this year's event theme is origins and evolution so it was so important to you know fully understand um where these ideas come from and what these people have gone through to get these ideas onto the stage so i'm i'm really excited for you guys to hear this uh today uh the other thing i wanted to mention is we're we're growing a little bit um more to come on this but uh there's gonna be a sort of network behind the launch cast uh, uh, coming up later this season. Um, we are going to be producing other podcasts, um, you know, the production company behind Launchpad, and we'll talk about that uh, later on down the road once things are finalized. But the production company behind the launch cast is going to be producing other podcasts um, that are going to go out there and, and stream. And so uh, I'm, I'm so excited about that. I'm so excited about um, how this thing has, has grown from, you know, a, a quick little idea that I had, uh, in early 2019 into this thing that, that is again, providing other people with stages to talk about the things that they need to talk about. It's what I did with TEDx Farmingdale with that stage. It's what I'm doing with this podcast stage here, proverbial stage. Um, and we're going to keep this thing going. So I will fill you guys in on that as, uh, as we progress, but without further ado, let's bring on the round table. Let's start with Dave Thompson, Dave Thompson from TEDx Farmingdale 2019. Uh, Dave, please name of your talk and a, a brief bio. Let me just look up my tone. No, um, my, the name of my talk was be selfish, embrace neurodiversity. Um, and it's important to note that it wasn't just me on the talk. It was uh, my partner, Josh Mursky and I. Um, and what was the other question? Um, you know, a little bio, a little, little, little bio. Sure. Okay, great. So, um, I'm kind of a, a leader in the, in the nonprofit world, um, within, within the world of neurodiversity inclusion, particularly with it, with regards to, um, employment and providing employment opportunities to people who think differently. Um, and as someone who is in special ed all my life, someone who has ADHD and dyslexia and some other things going on, that's a really important cause to me. So I started a, a podcast and an ongoing project with my partner, Josh Mursky, who has autism. Uh, and he and I gave, gave that talk in 2019. Uh, we were thrilled to be able to, to use that talk uh, as a springboard for many other things, which I'm sure we'll get into. Amazing. Thanks so much, Dave. Let's go to Audra Donro from our 2020 alumni. Audra, name of your talk and a little about yourself. Awesome. So my um, talk was social media is telling your story. Let's use art to fix it. Um, I am an art teacher here at Farmingdale School District, and my talk was focusing on not separating that concept of art from artifact, but realizing the process of what we do and what we make is essentially a living, breathing artifact, and that the rise in students or kids using cell phones to take photos, we need to harness that power to help students practice looking at images and taking images in order to translate to a more um, purposeful, academic, and meaningful life. Awesome. Thanks, Audra. Uh, we have now Kate McKinnon. Kate McKinnon from our 2020 event, The Truth. So Kate, name of your talk, a little bit about yourself, please. 
Okay, uh, so Kate McKinnon, the name of my talk was Women Aging Invisibility. And uh, it, from a truth, it was really powerful to be able to give this talk. Um, I'm now 66 when I gave it last year, I was 65. And really talking about, um, you know, our society deems women invisible after a certain age and the importance of really being able to, uh, for women to step into and, and um, have the conversation about no longer accepting that. And particularly the, the importance in my talk is really about passing this on to younger women so that they never, ever experience this in their lifetime. Thank you, Kate. Let's yep. move on to Marisa Zalabak. Marisa is from our 2020 event also, The Truth. Marisa, name of your talk, a little bit about yourself. Hi, good evening. So happy to be here. Fire Drills for Flourishing. That was the name of my talk. Um, I am an educational consultant, uh, organization, I'm sorry, an ed educational psychologist, organizational consultant, and um, I special in social, emotional, and creative intelligence. And my talk was about that, in fact, and about how we as human beings to prepare for the future as it unfolds, need uh, to embrace and practice our human skills, the skills that are most uh, unique to humans and not like machines. And that in order to use them, we have to practice them. And that was really what the talk was about. Amazing. Thank you, Marisa. Uh, final speaker is Laron Barton. Laron from our 2020 event, also the truth. Laron is not on hey. camera. Oh, there he is. Oh, hey, 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 Laron. Hey, man. Uh, hey, name of on? your talk and a little bit about yourself, if you can. Yes, uh, yes. My name is Laron Barton. The name of my talk is the vital importance of documenting the moment. I'm actually walking around still, still wearing a mask. And uh, you know, gosh, um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, George. What was the last question? A little bit about yourself. Okay, yeah. Um, so I'm a writer, author, speaker from Kansas City, Missouri, living in, in San Francisco, Cal California. And uh, it was just really happy to be able to talk on the TED, uh, on the uh, TEDx stage. And, uh, you know, I, I write about race, mass incarceration, politics, uh, business and dating. And uh, yeah, just really jazzed to be on, to be on this call. Awesome. Thank you so much, Laron. And then yes, yes. Uh, finally, Fred, if, if you can chat a little bit, uh, we have Fred Banny. Fred is one of our curation team members. Fred is also a, uh, a TEDx uh, speaker as well, former TEDx speaker from TEDx Deer Park. Um, Fred, if you can hop on audio for a second, just say hello. Tell, uh, tell everybody a little bit about yourself. Okay. Oh, you know what? Fred said he couldn't talk. Sorry. Uh, so he'll hop on later. I, I saw that in the notes. So um, let's start the conversation. So where I want to get this started first is, um, you know, I, I want people to learn a little bit about the platform um, as, as we approach our event here. So I'm going to, I'm going to do a, a little shameless plug here. October 9th is our third annual TEDx Farmingdale event. This one is called Origins and Evolution. That's this year's theme. It's a very intimate event. We're holding it at Charlotte Speakeasy in Farmingdale, New York, totally unique location. It's going to be a little bit of a different TED than we normally do. Uh, tickets are still available, TEDxFarmingdale.com. Just a few tickets left. So get those tickets. It's going to be an amazing show uh, on October 9th, Saturday during Columbus Day weekend. So you have no excuse. Everybody's off. Just get there. Um, so I'll start it off with Kate McKinnon, uh, if we can. So Kate, tell me a little bit about what... Um, what TEDx looked like to you before uh, you, you embarked on, on becoming a speaker? Uh, great question. I didn't really give my bio, but I, but I, you know, first thought about doing a TEDx. I was in corporate up till four years ago, and then I transitioned out of corporate into um, creating my own business. And I knew I wanted to be a speaker. I knew I wanted to be a TEDx speaker, but I didn't really know what that meant, to be honest with you. It was just like one of those goals out there that I said, there's something that I want. I, I feel like there's something in me that needs to be spoken, but I wasn't 100% clear. And I, I ended up doing a number of talks and finally in a master class with Trisha Brooke, it was in the course of doing that masterclass with her on a TEDx that it became really clear that I was all about mentoring women and sort of, and it really is about digging deep into what is for me really, you know, what is really important to me? Where do I feel that I have 
the message, but but sort of it's the desire to really talk about it. I mean, because it's a whole process to to create a talk and you know actually prepare it, apply. And you got I, I always say you got to feel your talk deeply. It's got to be almost embodied in you. And for me, that was really an important part of speaking. And um, after years of working in corporate, I very often was the only woman in the room. I mean, I just I've you know I had three older brothers. I have a lot of background in this, but it really became clear that this was my message. And uh, and it helped to have somebody help pull it out of me. To be honest with you, it was like there, but to really help shape it in a way that uh, ended up being the TEDx talk that I gave that felt very powerful and, and um, it was an amazing experience. I hope that answers your question, George. It absolutely, it absolutely answers my question. Anybody else want to pick it up from there? For me, TEDx was always something untouchable. You know, I did a lot of poetry events. I would love open mic nights. I love getting up there and I'm like, well, these people, have to listen to me you know they're here to listen to my poems and i applied to tedx farmingdale on a whim and just to see i, I had this idea and just it felt so good to feel validated that my idea was something worth listening to and i think from doing that i started and george knows i kept trying to write and write and write and write and get it until i got it right um through this process so i loved that being able to have a a chance being given to me and what I felt succeeding at was so exciting to just be a part of the process. And then I love meeting like Marissa, Marissa and I had a similar talk and we bonded right over that from the start. Yeah. Um, I'll pick up from there if I, Audra, are you finished? Yeah. Um, is, it was, what was interesting about the TEDx, because I've done a lot of public speaking before, but what was interesting about the TEDx is, and that platform is that it holds this, um, this, this I don't want to call it a weight, but an importance of the, the relaying of a message. And there is something when you're writing it that you begin, I, for me, I, you, I, me, I began to uh, take my me my own message very seriously and be really careful. What were the words I wanted to use? What were the what was the message I wanted to be to hear? What was the invitation I was making? And I think that's the exciting thing about TED uh, the TED talks or TEDx in general, and certainly um, encouraged by you, George, and by the event at Farmingdale is is really sticking to this idea of we're making an invitation, right? We're, we're setting out an invitation versus giving a lecture, right? It's, there's something really powerful in that. And, um, and it, uh, the seriousness of that invitation was simultaneous with the joy of it. It wasn't like it was serious and heavy. It was, it was actually quite joyful to do that, but really, um, there's, there's an artfulness of it in it. And that was really what was uh, very exciting, I think for me to be, uh, to take part in and to experience for myself. Um, yeah, no. go, ahead, go, go ahead. Uh, are you good, Marisa? I'm good, thank yeah. you. Okay, great, you're great, you're great. Um, <laughs> so to kind of piggyback back off- He's so what, charming. What, so what, charming. What, what, what about me? Everyone's great, but but to to uh, to kind of piggyback off what both kind of Kate and Marisa said, I guess I when when I applied to be a TEDx speaker, I really didn't know what that meant. Um, like I knew, like in in the very base kind of had watched some of the most viral TED and TEDx talks, and and um, was a fan of the the genre. But to kind of to hone in on what it meant it's to have an I, an an idea exactly. worth spreading. Uh, was a was a big thing for me, um, and not only that, but kind of what 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 Marisa said about um, it. Well, what she kind of reminded me of is that it's 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 committing to something and putting a date stamp on something and saying like this is how I'm feeling right now, and that's going to to it's what George taught us was it's not just going to be for that live audience. It's going to live on YouTube and on the internet and and on TED.com and everything forever. That's a big deal. 
um, it's w a bigger deal than like a trademark or a copyright because it's on, you know, something that's coming straight from your dome. And uh, that that was really, really exciting for me and really reinforcing for me and energizing for me to realize that I had to hone in on something and commit to something that this is how this is what I had to say in 2019 about this. Um, that was really special to me. Yeah, and I'll, I'll piggyback off of what Dave sure. said, who was piggybacking off of Marisa, who piggybacked off of Audra. Um, so, so I love what Marisa said about an invitation. So, so the biggest difference um, between what I thought a TEDx talk was and what a TEDx talk actually is, is that this isn't about you, right? And so as the speaker, um, when you get involved with an event that actually, you know, cares uh, uh, about these ideas and an event that um, is determined to, to share these incredible ideas that, that can really affect change, that's when you sort of get into this vibe of like, oh, this is like bigger than me. You know, this is not, this is not about me. This is not about those four letters next to my name. Um, and so when Marisa used the term an invitation, that's exactly what this is. This is an invitation to share this idea with somebody else. You are inviting somebody into this precious idea that you have been working on for so long. For, for a lot of us, um, whether it's one of our TEDx talks, all of our TEDx talks, whatever, these ideas are, are probably like a, a, a life's work that we're putting into the into this 12 minute little window. Um, and we're taking like these best of highlights, trying to figure out how do we engage everybody? How do we engage potentially millions of people watching on YouTube, hundreds of people in the audience? How do we get them to not only engage, but to invite them um, to share this idea with others, to engage them so much, so much that they see this little invisible call to action that we're putting at the end that says, please share, you know, and, and, and maybe just maybe if they accept that invitation and, and they choose to share with others, maybe that idea will actually spread and make a difference. And that's kind of, for me, that's like the biggest difference that I saw because originally it was like, all right, I'm going to do, but for me, it was, I'm going to do public speaking now, you know, this is the next evolution of, of what I'm going to do. And that, and oh, hey, Ted, TEDx, TED Talk, Ted, I got to do that. That's the thing. But it's gonna, I'm gonna check it off the box, and and I'm gonna do it. And it's gonna be another notch on my belt. And then it wasn't that, was it? You know, <laughs> it was it was this thing where you're kind of like, oh man, this is this is different. And I'm so glad uh, for me that I got involved with it, not just as a speaker but as a producer, because man, I've learned so much from. Um, uh, from from the process of, of giving my own talks, from collaborating with you guys and watching the genesis of these talks just turn into these behemoth ideas that, man, like it, I was doing the math the other day, um, tw uh, 39 talks to date have come out of TEDx Farmingdale. Um, 39 talks with uh, 40 one speakers because we had two duos the first year and eight more are joining the fray this year so that's that's about 50 talks that have come out of this platform and every single talk was important every single idea mattered and so that that whole wh why i'm talking about this is to to really give the audience a glimpse of why we do this as speakers why um you know we do this as producers uh, of the event um, it's, it's just bigger than, than the platform itself. It's about so much more and it's so hard to explain until you're, you're involved well, in it. Um, but it's, you know, it's you guys that have really made this come to life for us as, as organizers, you know? Um, and so for those people, and, and I'm sure you guys have people in your lives that, that aren't in this world that don't really understand it, that go, Ted, what, you know, um, for, right. for so for all the people that know me that have no idea what I do for a living or what I do for public speaking, that's what this is for. This is to, to just open this door, this window into my world um, and, and your worlds to to help people understand what this platform is about and and 
you know, uh, expose more people to it. Uh, George, uh, really quick. Uh, do you mind if I say something? Go ahead, please, Lauren. Yeah, no, um, you know, I, I to piggyback off of what George is, is saying, like, um, I love what you said about, uh, about the fact that it's not about you. You know, when I, when I, when I set out to do my TEDx, I, like my very first one, I wanted to talk about my journey as a stutterer. And I just feel like that when you approach it as you're just being a being of service, as you're, as you're like, look, you know, I'm not trying to do this to sell my brand, to position myself as a thought leader, and uh, and all that and all that stuff. But if you, but if you're really uh, just doing it because you want to help people and 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 because you know you want it, because you have this great idea that may change the world, because the, the the platform TEDx is so is so strong. I mean, just forget the fact that you're going to be on YouTube and that you know people are going to see it, but that you're also a part of this community. That there's so many folks that want to do a TEDx, man. I mean, it's you know, and it changes your changes your life. So you, but ultimately you have to come from it from a perspective of I'm doing this for someone else. Because if you come at it, you come sorry. If you come at it from a perspective of I'm just doing this just just to boost myself, then it's not really going to be that special. I'm going to flip the yeah. script a yeah. tiny bit. Oh, I'm so sorry. No, go ahead. Go ahead. Just in, in like a, a tiny little bit of a selfish reason or a selfish kind of way to think about it is it made me realize not to give up on an idea, an idea that I had. I wrote my thesis paper like six to eight, not. 10 years ago on this exact topic and I gave and I almost gave up on it. And then I realized it fit so well with the um, TEDx topic that I went back to it. So I think selfishly in a way, it's a platform that helps you realize not to give up on your ideas because ideas grow over time. And you know, if you don't keep at that, you have an idea for a reason, you have a spark for a reason. It helps you build the confidence within yourself to realize my ideas are good. And to be in a community that says, yes, your ideas are good. Let me help you make it better. Gives you more of a confident self-esteem. And I think in a way of, I can be a change maker now because I know my ideas are validated. I know I'm in a group of people that, <laughs> that is ready to do this with me. And, you know, laughing, crying. I remember when um, I was doing, I was reading mine like a poem and I had no, my stuff, uh, my pattern and my speaking was all messed up and I still when I plug it into my car my phone my recording of my voice comes up and I listen to it probably every freaking morning but um I think it gives you confidence in your ideas and that once you have that you're ready and able to make a difference in other places yeah yeah for yeah. sure so so let's talk for a minute about um uh, the process for you guys uh, of going through this. So, so we have two different groups here. We have the 2019 group and the 2020 group, which were completely different for so many reasons. Um, we, we pride ourselves on a very diverse event in terms of diverse speakers, diverse topics. Um, and so, you know, uh, 20, 2019 was incredible for so many reasons for us as organizers, because, and, and Fred, uh, who is on this call, but can't speak right now. Um, you know, Fred was there from from day one, and um, I had a vision for this event. When I remember, we sat down for our first curation team meeting, and they said, "Well, f well, George, what do you what do you want this event to look like?" And I said, "Well, no big deal, but I want this to be the best TEDx event of all time." Um, and look, and some of you who are on the 2020 event, I believe, were at 2019 as as audience members. Um, man, you know we really pulled off uh, a, an unbelievable event. And then the pandemic happened and everything changed. And I, I feel in a way for not just the 2020 speakers, but for myself also selfishly, because I, I love that idea of community. Um, I love what we had put together in 2019 and we couldn't host the same event. And yet the perseverance that the 2020 group had to, to get out there, the determination to get out there and, and still give these talks and still get them out there. And we had every obstacle you could possibly imagine in 2020 to make this thing happen. And even afterwards to get the talks out there. I mean, it was like one thing after another, but 
you know, we got it done and it's the perseverance of our speakers that, that, that really made it happen. So I want to talk a little bit about what it was like in your personal situation, um, you know, preparing for, uh, for this talk. We'll start with, uh, uh Dave, you want to start? Hi. Um, yeah, sure. So, uh, I'm someone who speaks in front of people a lot, but I, I, I think, like a, a few other conversations I've had with with this year's speakers uh, lately, I, I think I I had no experience in speaking, like any sort of memorized talk, and and more so, more so, uh, be so deliberate in what I'm saying. I've never had to be so deliberate in what I'm saying in my entire, probably in my entire life, besides maybe at my wedding ceremony or something like that. Um, so that was that was a big thing for me and for my partner as well who's uh really great at speaking off the cuff uh but we both struggle with our our attention our our retention uh and things like that so uh as far as preparing for the talk that was a a, a mountain we kind of had to get over that we really didn't know how we were going to get from a to b when we when we got the news um and to speak to that a little bit, everyone's got to do what works for them. As an educator, I know that. And as someone who's been dealing with my brain my whole life, I know that. Uh, and what worked for us is something, uh, a philosophy called forward chaining, which is uh, memorizing one part and, ma and mastering it, and then memorizing the second part and doing both parts and then the third part, um, rather than practicing the whole talk. Um, and you know, it also meant that we had to spend a lot of time together and a lot of time working together because it was very much a, a kind of back and forth between the two of us. Um, so, so it was, it was the, the preparation for it was amazing. Um, and do you want me to go into the actual event or are we going to wait? wait no, for we'll that? talk about that in a bit. We'll talk about okay, that in cool. a bit. Okay, yeah. cool. Yeah. So, so, I mean, we had some nosebleeds, we had some late nights, um, we had some, yeah, we, we, there were some days where we, I was like, what, what are we going to do? Um, and it ended up that I just, I, now I support Josh in the workplace. Um, but we're, we're very friendly and it, it ended up that I was the one that needed to write on my wrist, like some lines from my talk and Josh was totally great. Um, so yeah, it, it was, it was cool to see that come full circle like that. George, I want to jump in if I can, because I, you know, um, as you know, um, I did this talk originally for another TEDx event a year prior, and um, I decided at the event that it was, I got there, I was on the stage, it was the night before, the tech was not supported in the way that I expected, and I made a personal decision that it was not the right environment for my talk, which was pretty unbelievable having really been, been prepared. But what it did for me was then I had another opportunity, speakers who dare did it. And then it turned out we were during COVID and we went from doing it on a stage to doing our own videos. And it, the perseverance is the big part of this. Then, you know, applying to TEDx Farmingdale. And then it was a whole new way of doing it. And what I learned is, you know, I went from not being a speaker, as you know, I was, I didn't consider myself a speaker. I've had a lot of training, but through this opportunity, every time I did it, I got to do something differently and learn it differently. And I feel like I gave birth at TEDx Farmingdale. Like I had a talk that was finally on stage in front of people in a way that um, it was all COVID correct and everything like that, that I was ready to give that talk. Like I could give it anywhere, any way, you know, <laughs> sit me in front of a camera, I'll do my own recording. For me, as a speaker, that was really, really, really powerful. And that that desire to just kind of like, I think even Art was like, never give up, like just never give up. And there was something really powerful for me about that. And the other thing I want to say, which was part of that, the thing about not being about us, the feeling ultimately that I embody a talk but it's not, it wasn't about me and if I could just touch one person and each time, each opportunity I had to speak, that was the big motivator. I had a message if I could just talk and speak and touch one person and I had the opportunity to speak, touch people who, you know, I was talking about women and I, you know, 
everybody had an experience of it, which I think was really, really powerful. And to me, that says something about TEDx too. Yeah, I was, um, I love, I love so many things that you just said, Kate. So, uh, so first of all, I was very aware of the event um, that you walked away from and, and that whole situation and other speakers walked away from it. Um, and I'm so glad that you got to join us on our stage, but at the same time, I'm sorry that it wasn't, you know, the typical stage that we had um, to give everybody, you know, out there watching insight on um, what we had to do to make it happen. It would have been very easy for us to just shut it down and say, um, we'll still do it, but everybody please, um, you know, email us your videos that you've recorded in your home and you know, it'll be the, the usual backdrop of the office at home and, and stuff like that. And, you know, um, I know the work that goes into it. And I just, for, for the TEDx brand, for the TEDx Farmingdale brand, I wanted you guys to have the opportunity to have a stage, even if it wasn't the stage that we had hoped that it would be. Um, and so for those out there that are wondering how, you know, what we did for this event, we actually, I have an event space here in my office and, uh, we couldn't find a venue to support us, even though we knew that we wouldn't have an audience. Uh, obviously, we did this as a live stream, um, but I was adamant that we would have a stage and we would create a safe event um, where everybody could come in and give their talk on a stage. Uh, so when we couldn't find a venue, we just we built the stage in my office. Uh, we built a full TEDx stage in my office, and, and I got to say, like I was I was so pleasantly surprised with how it came together. Um, in the end and the whole production of it, you know, if you're looking at it from the 360 view, you see a, a nice, big, beautiful stage with lighting and, and the whole deal. And then 15 feet ahead of it is my conference table. It's been moved halfway across the office with all of the production equipment. And we were sort of running it like a TV show because we live streamed it um, simultaneously while we were recording on, on a four camera setup. Um, and so uh, I'll, I'll go to Marisa in a second. Um, and, and of course, Audra and Moran uh, can comment on this too. But um, taking that stage and, and, and even though we didn't have the audience, um, we, we really worked so hard to complete that experience for you guys so that you can say, I took a TEDx stage. I stood on that, that red dot. Um, how did you feel, Marisa, in, in comparison to you know, taking a stage that, that would have had an audience? You know, it's such an interesting thing, George, because, you know, it comes, it, it, it's really about the issues uh, it, it, or incorporates issues of what it is to be performative versus what it is to actually give a message. And those aren't mutually exclusive necessarily. And being somebody who is used to being on stage um, there were challenges to it, but you know, I have to say, along with Kate, I was the, the the talk I had just done before this was the first week of lockdown, where we were supposed to be on stage, didn't happen, and I literally had to tape duct tape my iPhone to my windowsill to tape myself to do that talk, which is all over YouTube and retaped it 80 times by myself with the guy screaming out the window because that's why I had to keep retaping it. Um, and so I, there was something, there was a huge amount that I learned about that. First of all, with the talk I had done right before that, which was kind of a preparatory for TEDx, there is this element of integrity and importance to the message being sent out to the world. And, uh, you know, to, to, to kind of piggyback a little bit off of Audra is, you know, it was a message that was really important. It wasn't, it was a message that was important for me to give. So it didn't, in a sense, you know, as much as I love an audience and I do, and there's feet, you know, there's, there's energy you get from that there was an extraordinary thing to say, first of all, that's not gonna happen. So we're just gonna do what is the right thing to do and do it with integrity. And the other thing though, that was really powerful from Farmingdale and from you, George, and from Fred, is that there was an absolute trust that there was no way 
that you were going to fail us. That doing that talk, regardless of all the stuff that had happened, and there were things that happened right before I went to do my talk, there were just were, was, was knowing that every single thing that happened was being done with everyone around us wanting our success and the success of the, not again, not, not just, and if there's nothing wrong with the success of our personal message, but wanting the success of the messages to be put out. And I think there was that to me, um, I will always be grateful to you for. Uh, it was an extraordinary experience. Uh, I know that from really good experiences in theater and not all of them are, just saying. <laughs> was that that was an extraordinary thing. And it was that the, the dedication to, we're going to put out something that matters to the world. Yeah. And that was, and I'll, you know, I'm, I'm going on too long, but that was actually really, uh, I think the most important thing. It didn't matter what the situation was, you know, that that was actually the most important thing underlying. What do we got here? Oh, oh, TEDx Farmingdale, TEDx Farmingdale. Fabrizio, remember that dancing Ted song with the, the Irish twist? Yeah, 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 yeah. Good job. Good job, buddy. Guys, TEDx Farmingdale, it's back. It's back. The 2021 TEDx Farmingdale event theme is Origins and Evolution. Origins and Evolution, which is so fitting because we have evolved and I am so excited about this event. Why am I excited? Because I'm not just the launch dad here at the LaunchCast, guys. I am the executive producer and licensee of TEDx Farmingdale. It's the third annual. We're back for the third time, but what's exciting is we're back with an in-person event. This time, we're taking it back to basics. Nice and small boutique event, intimate, at Charlotte's Speakeasy in Farmingdale Village. It's that joint downstairs from the yogurt shop. You know it, behind the bookcase, the secret password, all that stuff. So. TEDxFarmingdale.com. By the time you hear this, if tickets are still available, which they probably won't be, you can buy them right there on the website. But you know what will be available? Tickets for the live stream. That's right. We are live streaming this bad boy. 12 p.m. October 9th, 2021. Get your tickets for the live stream or get your in-person tickets and join us for a couple of drinks, some food, cabaret atmosphere. It's going to be incredible. Why is it going to be incredible? Eight incredible speakers giving seven talks. Who do we have? Maria Elizabeth Molly, Dr. Sonia Chopra, Kristen Donnelly, PhD, Aleem Arif. We have John Lee Cronin and Mark X Cronin from John's Crazy Socks giving an incredible talk. We have news legends, Lisa Mateo from CBS News and local news anchor legend, Carol Silva, all on our stage, all on our red dot giving their TEDx talks. I cannot wait to share this with you guys. Remember, TEDxFarmingdale.com for details. October 9th, 2021. Fabrizio, I did not get you a ticket, but it's okay. I'll, I'll show you the videos after. Good job in the song, buddy. Well, I'll I'll get real with you here because I, I love that we're we're talking about this stuff. And, and obviously the point of this thing is to really um, have people, you know, help them have a good understanding of what, what these things are about, why we do them, how they come together, because I think it's so important for people to understand this. Um, you know, I, I honestly in 2020 felt like I failed uh, the speakers. I felt a great deal of um, uh, regret, I would say, after the event for, for so many things um, that, you know, so many of them out of, out of my control, other things that I, I chose to handle things a certain way for, for certain reasons, right? Uh, I look back at 2019 and, and Dave knows this. I was there 100 and, 150% of the time, if that's possible. You know, I put too much of myself into the event in, in 2019. And because of that, look, it, it was amazing and it was a transformative experience, but I promised myself in 2020, I have to set limits. And so I set those limits hard in 2020. I set boundaries for myself. And when people got close to those boundaries, I let them know that they were close to those boundaries. Um, and, and because of that, um, I felt in the end that we had a very well-produced event. It was as, as, as good as it possibly could have been in that 
situation. Um, but you know, I didn't, we didn't build the, the feeling of, we built a community for sure. We didn't build the feeling of community that we had in, in 2019. Um, exactly. And you know, you can't replicate things or reproduce things. Um, but looking back, I mean, it means so much to me to hear, you know, what you thought of the event and, and, and our efforts, because it, in the end, um, our, our greatest, greatest uh, uh, goal as a curation team, and, and we, man, we had such a good curation team last year, and really the same team this year, um, that had one goal, and that was to get you guys on stage and get those videos done and give you an experience where you, there was no asterisk next to your experience. Meaning I did a TEDx, but I did it for my living room or I did a TEDx, but um, I had to go to the office by myself and film it and nobody was there. You know, um, again, for those that weren't there, we, we had uh, safety protocols, forget it. Like we set up tents outside, everybody, thank God we had, a, we had a beautiful day. We had everybody distanced. We had a second, stage that was set up outside for uh, photos and rehearsals with the logo we shipped a stage to chicago because we had three speakers in chicago and they remotely filled it they rented a venue so uh there were so many logistics but i'm, I'm so happy to hear that marisa because um you know my some of my drive for this year and for next year's event is to put on uh you know the greatest event that i possibly can because i didn't feel that i I did that in, in 2020. So I appreciate your, your words there, but I'd love to hear from Laurent and Audra too. Um, Audra, uh, uh, why don't you go, uh, why don't you go okay. next? Sure. I mean, speaking about kind of the event itself, well, what was fortunate enough for me is that I, I work in Farmingdale. I knew a lot of the curation team and people at the event. So I was getting ready. I'm like, I'm going to go on the stage. I got this. Um, you know, uh, let me just, if I need to wing it, I know how to wing it. I tried really hard to make connections beforehand. Um, Aaron taught me a lot of techniques. If I ever stumbled what to say while I'm trying to get myself back. And I, I met with Wayne um, during a Zoom meeting just to practice my um, inflections. And then I realized I got up there and I was like, damn, these lights are bright. I don't see anybody. <laughs> Like, um, I'm like, where is everybody that I told myself to watch the whole time? But it was a wonderful experience for me only because I felt like it was the best way to start. And it was the most, and I felt confident and I felt comfortable. And I think in the kind of modified sense that it was, it was, it was a great learning experience, whether it, presenting, doing it and afterwards. Um, what else was I supposed to say? whatever you want <laughs> i'm just it's making a, sure my cat doesn't jump up on me i'm trying to make sure i'm like side-eyeing my cat to make sure she doesn't jump up <laughs> while we're talking <laughs> but I, I i'm ready i'm down to help for any event going forward i think it's so great to acknowledge tedx farmingdale be able fortunate enough to work there and be part of the bigger community and this smaller community within it yeah. um which is exciting and you know um, yeah Amazing. Sign Thank me up you, to Audra. help anytime you want. <laughs> Thank you, Audra. Laurent, go ahead. Yeah, um, I, th I think that with anything in, in 2020, we had to pivot. So, I mean, yeah, you know, you could have, you know, you could have just said, you know, what, you guys, we're not going to do the talk today. I'm, I'm sorry, this year. Or, you know, you can, uh, you can just like send us the video. But, the way that it was handled, I, I thought that it was handled the, uh, the best that I think we're losing Laurent a little bit. Laurent, we'll, we'll come back to you, buddy. We're losing you a little bit. So um, this is what I want to pivot to now. Um, I want to talk about, we have about 15 minutes left. I don't want to go too far past eight o'clock. Um, I want to talk to people about the day of, right? So it's, it is show day and we have two different show days here, but in reality, they were looking back show day felt very similar for me both years. Um, you know, different nuances, 2019, there were multiple elements to it, right? So 2019, there was, 
the speakers and the stage and the production, right? So that's, that to me is one element. Um, and that was same thing uh, uh, last year for, for 2020's event. But we also now throw in a live event with an audience in 2019. Um, that was, you know, a pretty, <laughs> pretty decent sized audience that we had. We had volunteers, you know, we had like, 40 something volunteers because it was a large event and we also had this whole nonprofit showcase that, that we did out, outside during the breaks and you know a lot of different elements last year the other element was um you know the safety protocols we were which we were so cognizant of but take all that side stuff out and to me both years felt very similar um prepping with my team and now it's almost showtime and, and we have set up the speakers. And then, you know, I remember walking into the green room, let's call it because one was an outdoor green room, one, one was an indoor green room and, and talking to the speakers and just kind of saying, Hey, this is, this is it. This is what we've all been working for so hard. Um, you know, you guys have got this. And, and I, I was, I genuinely felt so proud both years to be in those rooms with, with these speakers it was um it was really surreal to see everything come to come to fruition both years and then you know i take my place the rest of the team takes their places and here we go it's showtime and everything sort of worked like a machine and it was kind of all a blur until we're all on stage after the event taking photos together which is literally both years were identical for me and you know watching the processes you watch here are the speakers that are so excited to be here and outgoing and just taking in the experience. And then, you know, the, the nail biters who are, you know, excited, but, but a little nervous. And then the people that are off in the corner with their headphones on and want nothing to do with anybody until the talk is over. And every, we all have our different processes. So I want to talk about day of, <laughs> excuse me, with each of you, um, what it was like. We'll start with Marisa on this one. Talk to me about the day of um, what that felt like how you felt on stage and, and the feeling after your talk was over. Um, it was a, um, it was actually a wonderful experience. I had, I had the great fortune of one of the other speakers driving me. I, I, I took an Uber out to, you know, cause of all the protocols in the city, we were on lockdown and trains and whatever. And I, I took an Uber out to Queens and I drove in with one of the other speakers. And so in a sense, from the beginning, I felt that camaraderie. And I think that that is something that I've always loved about the theater. That was something I've, I really loved in this event that was true about the event. And I think from, from what I've heard about other TEDx events, I think that they're probably wonderful, but there may not be the same amount of camaraderie that is kind of embedded in the process. And so from arriving that moment, it didn't matter. Everybody did have their different processes, processes. But what was really great was that everybody just, you know, we all we needed was a nod. It's like, okay, okay, you're doing this, you're doing this, you're doing this. And then when we, you, know, you were finished, you went out and everybody was just laughing and relieved. And, and but that is, I think the spirit would, and it goes back to George, this feeling that I felt very clearly that everyone had everyone's success in mind. So day of was all about that. It's like, if you were, you know, you forgot something, somebody was going to come up with it or you were going to, but it, and, and nobody knew each other because we hadn't been ha had a, had enough, a few people did, but we didn't have the opportunity. And so I can just say, um, day of is really about trusting for the next group. I can tell them that even in the worst circumstances, we were able to do that. Yeah. In the best, in the best circumstances, which you will have this year, piece of cake, go for it because it will be there. That's what I would encourage the new speakers to feel. Love it. Thank you, Marisa. Kate, how about you? Um, yeah. So first of all, George, I just want to go back a little bit. Uh, I, I always felt well taken care of by you. I just want you to know that as, as, as a producer, 
And um, I always knew that you had everybody's best heart and mind, even if whatever challenge you experienced, my experience was that we were taken care of. And I think that was really important. So even though we didn't all see each other, we had a couple of calls. Marissa and I were, you know, we were lucky enough to have another person that we practiced with. And I know other people did. So, so there were little clusters, right, where people would practice together and stuff. And so the day of, um, I actually did makeup and hair uh, in somebody's room. And so that becomes an opportunity. So there were like these little like moving parts and sort of, um, and, and I've done enough to know that everybody is nervous in their own way, including myself. And it shows up however it shows up. And I can be very social. And then it's like, you know, like right before it's like, I'm not talking to anybody. You got to kind of shut down and stuff like that. And I, I just, it's, it's almost like not knowing any better. It was great for me. Do you know what I mean? It was like, great, because ultimately, um, it's like, there was the stage. And, and, you know, for me, part of it was, there was no audience, but there's something powerful to be able to talk to a space and be with the audience, even though they're not, it's different. But um, I just, I just, it was a great experience for me. It really was. I just uh, loved it and um, loved the people who were there and felt a community, even though it was, it was a COVID community. Like, let's face it, right? It's just kind of what, we're, yeah. but it, it felt, it felt creative. Uh, it felt like people were pivoting, but it, it was about making the best of what we have. And there's something really beautiful and powerful for me. That's like the ultimate creation, right? to make it happen. And I felt like we together as a team made it happen. And that was, I just was proud to be a part of TEDx Farmingdale. I'm gonna be there by the way, on the ninth. I don't live that far away. Um, I wanna go see what that's like. And uh, I just, it was an honor to have that opportunity. And I just, I couldn't be happier to be honest with you. Thank so, you, Kate. Thank yeah. you. I want to go back uh, uh, when we, uh, after Audra and Dave give their feedback on this, and I want to, uh, we're going to wrap up by talking about post TED and what life has been like. And I want to, I'll start with Kate on that one and I'll say something, but uh, let's go to Audra. We, uh, Audra and Dave, not to limit you guys, I want to stay on this for another like three minutes and then we'll, we'll start wrapping up. Well, I think um, one thing to add, I kind of spoke a little bit about the day of before, but I know for me, I had to know what mindset I needed to be in and respect that mindset. And I think my best advice is that day of is know or try to um, expect or know what you're going to need from yourself and be able to and be ready to do that for yourself. So I knew I was going to need to distract myself with other things. So I brought a book, I brought my iPad to draw on, and I was listening to my talk as I went. And that helped me prepare for the actual talk. Amazing. Dave? Cool. Um, I've heard a bunch of people say today that the talk is not about you or it shouldn't be about you. And that's the best way to go into it. And I think that's absolutely true. And I think when we, when we were reading it or we were writing it and we were practicing it, we knew that it wasn't about us and our, our, our you know, uh, furthering our, our careers, but it was more about the philosophies and the message, but talk about a day, not being about you. I mean, you, you kind of are giving up, giving your your whole self up to this process um that you may only do during a few other milestones in your life where you're like this is happening with or without me and and you're just kind of like talk about a lack of control of something you signed up for right uh it's a really amazing feeling to kind of give yourself up in that way and say like i'm next dude like <laughs> you know what i mean um and that was a bit that, you know, we, we had, a, we did have a live audience and I don't know what I'd be more afraid of it being, you know, live streamed or, or the live audience. And, you know, Josh and I had 40 something people in the audience between the two of us that came from all over the place. And, and, you know, are the two nonprofits that we serve together were, were heavily represented in the building. And that was, just, that was uh, a, an incredibly powerful feeling. Um, and, and, you know, the impact that all of us, the whole, the whole squad on um, the whole roster were making was really tangible in that space throughout that day. Um, and, and I can't say enough about the kind of, you know, culture that you, you promoted and that we, we, you know, helped to create every day. Um, and it, it wouldn't 
be what it was without that. You know what I mean? Our talk wouldn't be our talk without that. So um, it's no joke. Yeah. Yeah. I appreciate it. Um, I want to start wrapping up guys. And I, and I want to wrap up with this. I want to talk about life after TEDx um, in two, two areas, but I, I know this is a lot to cover in, in a brief amount of time. I want to talk about life after TEDx for you and life after TEDx for your idea. I will say briefly um, before I let you guys go and we wrap um, is that the, the, the genesis of not only these talks throughout the collaborative uh, space that we, that we provided, right? Because for, for those that don't know, um, we, provide an, we, we, we have an accountability program uh, within TEDx Farmingdale where it's not just like, hey, congratulations, you got it. See you October 9th, right? It's, it's hey, there's draft deadlines, there's collaboration with the curation team, there's you know, rehearsals, there's all this kind of stuff. And so we're trying to, we provide that space not because we can teach you how to write your talk better. We provide it because we want to provide a space um, for you to work with others. And we, we all know that when we work with others, our end product is, is better. And so, you know, if an idea can spark to, to give you one little nuance that maybe you didn't have in your talk that might make it better or more engaging, that's, that's what we're here for as a, as a curation team. But ultimately, this is your idea and your talk. The genesis of these ideas throughout the collaborative process was incredible to me, like seeing what they started as and seeing what they turned into when they got on stage was amazing. But the genesis in the speakers was equally as amazing, right? Um, we are a diverse community for a lot of reasons. I mentioned before, diverse in speakers, diverse in topics. Um, I, as the executive producer, do not have to agree with an idea to have it on a stage. I just need it to be an idea worth spreading to put it on the stage, right? And so there's no limitation to what ideas go on that stage based on how we feel as a curation team. There's no politics, no religion, no nothing involved in, in these decisions. Um, and so the same way that we're diverse in all these different areas, we're also diverse in experience. I think 2019 had, out of the 24 talks, um, or 26 speakers, let's say, because we had the two duos, I think 13 or 14 of them had never been on a stage before ever once in their lives. And that to me is so cool to see you come on as a, a person that is so green, that's never done this. And now you're a TEDx speaker when this is done and, and you did a good job of it. That's incredible. Um, so I see people like Dave, uh, Dave and Josh, they came to me so willing to learn. And that's just the best position to be in because I just love helping people and the rest of the curation team, Fred, who was on the call before uh, and couldn't chat is incredible with our speakers too. I love just being able to, to give the things that I've learned uh, in order to, to help somebody else. And so Dave and Josh, they've done speaking before. Uh, they weren't new to speaking, but different kind of things, right? TEDx is a different, a different kind of talk than that. Um, and they left completely different people. So I'll, I'll let Dave touch on that. Uh, Audra, you know, a, a, an educator, a teacher that, that is not afraid of, you know, an artist, by the way, that is not afraid to be in front of people and say things, say things that she feels, um, learned a new way to do that. And I saw the growth in you. Marisa, pro, I mean, but you got even pro -ier, if that's possible, right? Is that a word? Um, Kate, I wanted to say before, Kate, because of our mutual connections, I have watched Kate in, in this part of her. Kate was a badass before any of the public speaking happened. And then she decided to be Kate 2.0, right? And, and I watched Kate's speaking career bloom from early on just because of our mutual connections. And as a producer, right? Who, who you fall into my purview now for somebody who could potentially be on an event. I watched and I was able in my mind to go like, you know, she's getting there. She's not there yet. She's not yet. She's not there yet. Not there yet. And when I had heard about the event you walked away from, I was like, oh my God, I want her, but I want her if she chooses to come here. And I want to know that she's ready for this. And then I saw you at a speaker showcase, I think, think with I'm confused now with all these things I go to but and that I got your audition stuff and and the application and I was like 
oh, damn it, she's ready. Like I was like, she's ready. And I had seen the growth over the years. And then from the beginning of our process to you taking the stage, like to me, it's, it's just so incredible to see like the growth in everything and everybody that's to me is the most fulfilling thing. So I know we're a couple of minutes over, but guys, just you take it for a little bit. Talk about post Ted in both your idea and how Ted has affected um, your lives since, uh, since then we'll start with Kate on this. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll keep it brief, but um, first of all, I want to say uh, confidence as a speaker um, and the, the uh, in, a, in a way, it, it's, it's a peak performance. I can say I've had a few peak performances in my life. This is definitely one of them that I feel proud of, not, not in a boastful way, but it's like, it was a dream I had. I went and I did it and it just, um, it's spread in a way. I mean, I have people talking to me about my talk. And when that happens, there's nothing like it. When they want to, people want to come and talk to me. And I said before, it's like men, it's gay men. You know, men want to talk about their wives. So it's not just women, it's young women, older women. And that, there's nothing better than that. And so I feel it's a calling card when I say I'm a speaker and I've done a lot of speaking, but I've done a TEDx talk, there's, there's something about that that just really stands very strongly for other people to say yes. And then they can go see my video if they want to find out what kind of speaker I am. So the, the whole thing, George, has just been incredible, incredible yeah. experience. Yeah. Thank Dave, you. how about yeah. you, buddy? Um, I, I think ours is somewhat unique in, in that it, it's very kind of meta um, the talk itself was about deserving a platform. And by getting that platform, these two dudes that think differently, the talk became, we, we won. Like, so it was this very incredible feeling. And I'm sure a lot of people feel similarly and, and you know, um, re, it, it's very reinforcing to a lot of people, but it was about how all perspectives are valuable. And so for two, two neurodivergent people, uh, who struggled a lot when in their careers and in the world of of, of school and, and socializing and so many different areas. Uh, it was really, really cool to kind of get that Ted seal of approval. And as far as us um, really kind of evolving through this process, uh, I've never been more, I've never felt stronger in my convictions than I do now. Never felt more sure of what I think and what I know and and the kind of perspective that I want to be providing uh, people. And I could say that for for Josh as well. And the most reinforced, and since Josh wasn't able to be on the call, I just want to say a story that he always tells is that he talks to people in other countries, people that have been assigned to watch the TED Talk at the Special Olympics in D.C., like the Special Olympics headquarters and in college classrooms and things like that. And in time zones that couldn't be further from here, right? Like... Um, and so it's been re really reinforcing to him and his self-esteem um, to, to know that his voice does matter. Um, that, that, that's been our biggest thing. Yeah, amazing. Thank you, Dave. Uh, Audra. And I think just to go with that, that our voices do matter, but it gave me sort of this urge to want to be able to facilitate not only for my students, but other people the same experience. So other people whether big or small can experience having their voices heard and build confidence in it. Amazing. Thank you, Audra. Marisa. Uh, there's, I think four things. Uh, the first one is uh, credibility. It, you say to somebody, I'm a TEDx speaker. It's suddenly people get a, they get peaked. And um, it's funny, I, my daughter ended up being fortunate enough to go to a very schmazzy, wonderful school and, you know, not, not, a, not a history I come from and it's an amazing thing that she got to go there. But if I say, oh, she went there, people go, oh, right? And it's the same thing with TEDx. If I say, I, you know, I'm a TEDx speaker, it's like, oh, you know, you can say you're a speaker, but that, 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 that's the first thing. And, and I think to me that breaks down social barriers that I think should be broken down personally. Uh, the second thing is, um, it's funny, I love that you called me, you called it pro-ear, George, that just made me laugh so hard, is, you know, the thing about performing as a performer on stage is you're playing a character, not yourself. Unless you're a stand-up comic, 
you're really playing someone else, right? And so what would ha what happened is very often you were invisible in plain sight. And with TEDx, you're not. Yeah. You're actually, you have to be visible for, for real. You have to actually really be willing to be visible. That's the second thing. The third thing um, is that there were, were, I have had, I've had people reach out to me on, on LinkedIn, on other places going, I just watched that TEDx and that's just amazing. And, and I've had all kinds of people from all kinds of places. And I think the fourth thing, which is really important to me because I'm a vi very much a visionary and a futurist is I always come up with these ideas and then I go, oh, but somebody's now writing about that. I've been talking about that for the, for the last 20 years, but I hadn't put it out there. And by having the platform, thank you very much, having the platform to put it out there, I now can say, I was thinking that. That was actually out there. And there is a kind of personal pride, I want to call it, to saying, it's, I'm not certainly reinventing the wheel, but to saying, you know, I, di I, I did go this path and I understand this path and there's a validation again to it. Anyway, I think those are the four things um, and I'm very grateful. Thank you. Thank you, Marisa. Um, hang out for just two minutes, guys, while I wrap up, I'll end the live video and then I'll say goodbye to you guys. Um, so, so first of all, I wanna thank uh, these four guests for joining me five, uh, plus Fred. So Dave Thompson, Audra Dunro, Kate McKinnon, Marisa Zalabak, and uh, Lauren Barton. And we also had Fred Banny from our curation team um, was on the call shortly. Um, I'm going to say before I wrap also TEDxFarmingdale.com. We have uh, a few tickets left for our next live event, Origins and Evolution on October 9th at noon at Charlotte Speakeasy here in Farmingdale, New York. It's going to be an incredible event. Eight speakers giving seven talks the seven i call them um it's uh we're back to basics this year we're throwing a small event so that we could focus on the talks and these ideas worth spreading you don't want to miss it it's going to be incredible and keep an eye out for a major announcement regarding this event um, because we may have additional ways for the audience to see the event uh but that will be coming next week probably um Closing note with this, um, and, and it's really a piggybacking off of what Marisa said just now. Um, a lot of piggybacks tonight, a lot of piggybacks. Um, you know, we, we all do this for a reason, um, but we do it. And that's the key here. We did it. We did it. Everybody in this room has gotten on that stage, on that red dot, and done it and said it out loud. And if there's anything that I can say about leadership, it's that the person that stands up and says, I'll do it, or I'll help do it, or I'll help you do it. That's the leader in the room, right? And so right now I'm looking at four other leaders that have gotten up and they can say that I did it and I own that idea or we own that idea. Um, and that's so important. And that's what this whole thing is about. So for everybody watching out there that has no idea what a TED Talk is, a TEDx Talk is, what TEDx Farmingdale is, these are people that are brave enough to get on stage and share something that they have been thinking about, something that they have been working on, and they want to share it with you. And that's all it's about. Um, the people behind the stage, we're just the people that are providing a platform for these people to share those messages. So if you have that power to create a space for somebody to get an important idea out, then create the damn space. If you have the power to create one of those ideas in your wonderful brain and you want to share that idea, but you don't know how to, call me. Let's get you on a stage, right? That's what this thing is about. Find an opportunity to get out there because that's all we are trying to do here as curators, as speakers. Um, that's all that this is about, right? Uh, thank you all for joining me. Audience, thank you for joining me. This is part one of a two-part series. We're doing this again one week from today with another group of TEDx alumni. There are so many TEDx alumni now. It's, it's a whole thing. It's a whole, you, don't, you guys don't even know about it. It's a whole thing. Uh, so we're going to say goodbye. Bye. How great was that roundtable? 
I am telling you, these people, one thing that I pride myself on is the ability to choose people that really deserve to be on that stage. Um, and I think for me, that's the most exciting thing. I got into producing TEDx events in order to become a better public speaker myself. I wanted to be able to help other people dissect their ideas and, and not only collaborate with them, but learn through the collaborative process how they put their talks together, how they come up with their ideas worth spreading. And to me, it's, it's, it's crazy to watch these other processes, right? Because we have our own process, um, you know, as speakers, when, when we come up with these ideas and we kind of sometimes put ourselves in this little box and, and we're, we're sort of married to our way of doing things. And so when I started producing these events and I got to see the way other people um, put their talks out there, other people come up with these ideas, other people, uh, other people's journeys to get these ideas out there, it showed me a whole different side to leadership that was really, really amazing to me. And I'm so impressed with every single, you know, talk that we've put on this stage. I'm so honored to be associated with these people. We have now, up until this event, I have produced 39 talks. Um, 39 TEDx talks have gone on the stage on my red dot our red dot as the TEDx Farmingdale uh, curation team. Um, and we're going to add seven more to that, right? So it's going to be 46 uh, when all is said and done in a couple of weeks. And uh, to me, that's just, it, it's exciting. Um, it's a level of leadership that I've been, you know, aspiring to for years. You know, as a servant leader, I want to be able to help people become leaders on their own. And, and not that these people needed any help because they're incredible leaders, as you saw today. Um, but, you know, just another opportunity that we could provide, right? Another another way to be of service. So, uh, guys, thank you for joining me again for another episode of the Launchcast. You know, uh, the, the, the whole thing with, with social, uh, at Launchpad CEO, at at the launch cast show you, you could find all that stuff in the show notes i don't want to bore you with that stuff guys it's been a pleasure we'll see you next time launch sequence terminated into the black hole Thanks for listening to the launch cast today please make sure to subscribe to this feed wherever podcasts are available follow me george andriopoulos at launchpad ceo on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram. And make sure to visit our website, guys, thelaunchcast.com. Looking forward to the next episode. See you soon, guys.